Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animal Orange, and welcome to another Metal Earth review. Today I am excited to bring you the review for the Metal Earth Y-Wing we have here. I believe technically this is Azori's Y-Wing, it's one of the models that has recently been released for the upcoming Star Wars movie, the Rise of Skywalker. The movie's not out yet, as of, as of the recording and build of this model, the movie is not yet out. So I don't know the details behind this, but I am so excited to finally have a Y-Wing to build. And what a model this is. There is so much detail packed into this little bitty model. I mean, it's not teeny tiny, but it's not big. It's certainly not Iconics. It is rather small, and there's lots and lots and lots of detail just in this area alone. That's where most of it is, but it's not limited to just that area. I am so completely impressed in how much detail they've cram-packed in there. There's a little bit of me that was thinking, Metal Earth, what in the world are you, what are you doing? There are so many tiny, tiny, tiny little parts. But the reality is it's, it's completely doable. It takes some time. This build, I think, took me a total of six hours, which is quite a bit for a model this size, but that's because it's so packed with detail and there are a lot of little parts. So I would definitely rate this as a more challenging model. Not crazy challenging, not how in the world am I going to do this challenging, but challenging in a way that there's lots of detail and lots of tiny parts that you have to just be careful with, carefully place, carefully shape, carefully fold and carefully take your time with a little more so than a lot of other models, way more so than the earlier models in Metal Earth's lineup where it only took maybe an hour or two hours to put together. This one you really have to slow down and take your time and fortunately after building models such as these for, was it six years now? I was able to do that and finish this model successfully. That's not to say I didn't have a couple of hiccups there was one instance where there's two tiny little sort of golden red parts in there, two matching parts. I was getting ready to place one of them. I noticed the side was bent a little too much. Tried to bend it out. Popped out of my tweezers. I spent two days trying to find that part before I finally gave up and uh, acquired a replacement. And funny thing is, is at the end of the build, I think there actually was a third one on the sheet. There were just so many tiny parts I couldn't find it. That ended up being a good thing because I did end up having problems in another area. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But there is just so much detail crammed into this model that I just, I'm completely blown away. And at the end of this model, there are many times when it comes to detailed models and frustrating things to get right where I end up in a position where I'm just almost hating the model by the end out of frustration. After a little bit of time to cool down, an hour or two, maybe half a day, it really depends, I'm loving the model again. But there's that frustration of it's just things are not going right, they're not fitting. It's, mm. I didn't feel that way with this model. At the end of the model, I was thrilled, thrilled about it. Absolutely, positively thrilled. I'd also like to point out, if you haven't noticed, I've been asking for a Y-Wing for quite some time. And I have been saying for the longest time, as well as others, I'd love to have a Y-Wing. Still remains one question, where? is my Y-Wing fighter. One that I've said time and time again, I'd love to see a Y-Wing. I've mentioned it in videos, I've mentioned it in Facebook posts, I've mentioned it in Instagram posts, I think I've even mentioned it in Twitter posts, but so many times in so many videos, more than I could possibly count. And now I finally have the Y-Wing and boy they say be careful what you ask for because this is a lot more complicated a lot more detail. I don't want to say complicated. Complicated makes it sound bad. It's a lot more detailed than I would have expected. And I used to worry that if Metal Earth finally took me seriously, Metal Earth finally decided to construct, to make a Y-Wing model, my biggest worry was going to be these parts back here because they're kind of long, thin pieces. But the way they've designed this, that's not even a concern. These little pieces right here are not even a concern. The issue is so many tiny parts, mostly on this side, tiny parts on that side. Really, there's tiny parts all the way around. You've got this infamous part 57 that's around the front of the, I want to say nacelles because I'm such a uh, Star Trek fan. And you've got 
just tiny parts littered here and there and so much little detail like inside of there inside of here we're getting to the point of having having layered detail not that metal earth has never done that before but it's definitely in this model you've got parts inside of parts like right here i love that i love that was one of the things i really loved about megatron the emu megatron model i built is there were parts layered on top of other parts that really really gave it a deep 3d look and they're doing they did that with this prime example right there i'm absolutely loving it the amount of stuff that's piled up on top of here a lot of it is wires and cables i'm absolutely loving it, it gives it so much more character and so much more interesting detail to look at i'm absolutely loving it in here you know these antenna things are kind of sunk in behind other pieces and it's just just fantastic job metal earth fantastic job was absolutely positively worth the wait. I have no real complaints. So glad this model is finally here. I say no complaints. There is maybe one or two areas in the instructions. I'd like to be a little bit clarified, but overall, absolutely loving this model. I keep talking about how much detail is in this model, and when you start this build, the main thing you're working on is just like, center body area and you start with the bottom piece putting all the pieces on the bottom piece takes up like half of page two there's nothing on page one you know it's just the sheets and the, the introduction and you know all that stuff it even overlaps onto page two but most of page two aside from the bit at the top about fold lines and and the legend and key is all about forming the bottom of this little area right here and there's a number of little pieces in there and i feel like saying that it's it's most of that page like two-thirds or more or actually three-fourths of that page is not really given it justice because there's a lot of steps in that and one thing that struck me i don't have the best of vision i've actually had cataract surgery on both eyes so i i I'm not wearing glasses right now and sometimes i have to hold things up close to my eyes to be able to see i had to hold the instructions up to the magnifying glass at a few points to be able to see and understand what's going on because there's so much crammed in to not just the first page but several different sections throughout this build like the first maybe four pages there's there's areas where i had to just hold the instructions up really close under a magnifying glass to really grasp what's going on and that's because there's just lots of little parts that have to be shaped and folded and really was making use of the precision tweezers a lot of the parts i was impressed that they were very well scored or the, the fold lines are very well cut or marked whatever you want to say and the pieces felt folded over really easily and that made folding those tiny parts a lot simpler and a lot easier to do very thankful for that there were a few areas where that was not the case and it actually tested the strength of my precision tweezers because the tweezers have to be small to be able to grasp these sections and fold them but because they're so small they're only so strong and there was a few areas where it really tested the strength of the tools i had available to me which kind of makes it maybe i could get tougher tools maybe i can at that size it's kind of hard to say but it really kind of pushes the limits of what's doable with these models but it is doable and i had a lot of fun doing it at the very bottom of page one, you start building another structure that ends up going on the upper side of this, this center piece. I've actually, I think I've got that faced the wrong way. This kind of center body area. And that center, the top part has so much more detail than the bottom part. So while the bottom part was kind of intense, the top part is like twice as intense, if not more. You end up, like I said, starting at the bottom of page one, like the last little bit, you're going all the way through page two, almost to the bottom of page two. So there's an entire page, basically, devoted just to adding things onto this top part. Just adding detail onto the top part. An entire page of stuff that some of it is so small I had to hold under a magnifying glass. There was a couple areas that kind of stuck out to me. A couple areas that I want to remark on. 32 and 33, there's a couple of pieces in here. The back of it's kind of thick. You can maybe see it here. And then they have like one wire that runs up the side. And one side's folded opposite the other. That one threw me for a little bit of loop. Because one of those pieces, I think it's 33. 
the top part has like an orangish color on it, whereas 31 has no color, or 32 has no color on it. You do 32 first, and then you do 33. And when I got to 33, I, like an idiot, folded that little thin wire, wrapped it around, folded it the wrong way, because I guess in my head I was trying to shape it the same as the first one, it's the opposite. Went to go put it in its place, and I'm like, number one, the wire's sticking the wrong way, and number two, oh, this one has a red mark on top, the other one doesn't. For a split second, I thought I had folded 32 backwards, and I had to stop and double check. But it's interesting, and that 32 and 33 are basically mirrored parts, but one has markings and coloring on the top, the other one is just silver. And for me, that plus one other silly mistake made me think that I had folded a part wrong. <laughs> it's interesting, maybe I'm the only one that ever would ever see it that way and make that mistake. But it just kind of stood out that it wasn't symmetric as far as the coloring in that part. At the same time, that makes a lot of sense for these type of models because they're not always symmetric. They do have a lot of greebles and wires and weird things on them. Speaking of wires and cables, this top part has numerous pieces that are basically just wires and cables. There's part 22, there's part 32 and 33, which I've already talked about that has a one long wire on each side. There's part 36, 37, and 40. They're all some sort of mass or section of just wiring and cable that just sit on top of this top section in different areas and just add so much detail to it. I'm really, really loving it. They were a little bit tedious to work with because you had to hold things still with one tool while you bent tabs over and it was, you know, stuff that could be easily warped. But by this point, as many models as I have under my belt, that wasn't that big a deal is one of the reasons I've, I think I've already said it and if I haven't I'll say it I'll say it now this is not something I would start with if you're getting into Metal Earth I'd get a little bit of experience under my belt before I got to this point point. and Metal Earth has been making these type of models for quite a while and I can certainly see where the Star Wars models because the Star Wars is a popular line we keep getting new ones I know some people are tired of it some of us are not the Star Wars model lineup has kind of increased in complexity as it's gone along. I remember the first models that came out, the Millennium Falcon, the at, -AT. Those were two-hour builds, more or less. This was six hours. So they really upped the game, and it's grown with their customer base. Because a lot of us have been doing this a while. So that is very satisfying for many of us. If you're new to this, be very careful. This one's a challenging one, not impossible, but beware. It's got some advanced techni techniques in it and some challenging folds. The bottom of page three, going back to just, you know, what's going on in the pages, it's at the bottom of the page three that you actually begin to work on this back section right here. So you spend like almost the first three pages working, I, not even that, actually page the three is working on the back of that. The bottom of page three, you start working on the back and then you flip around and you start working on this front section here and that takes you halfway down page four there's two sheets in this instructions there's one through one sheet has one page one through four the other sheet has five six seven eight and you spend almost the entire front first page of this build just working on this center section and that's how much detail is packed into there the rest of it the starting at the bottom of page four and going through the rest of the build you start working on these nacelles or engines or whatever you want to call them and they are fairly detailed. They're also larger and take up more room so you're moving kind of at a faster pace through the pages. So the images are taking up more room so it takes them more to get to the next step. You're not working with tiny pieces. I want to stress that. The reason that it makes a big deal that the first three pages are just working on the center body is because a lot of those pieces are small pieces so you can get a lot of steps on one page Whereas after that point, bottom of four, five, six, and seven, you're, they're showing much larger pieces, so there's less room for each step, and you're moving faster through it. So, so much detail goes in the beginning. Once you get to the bottom of page seven, or towards the bottom, you begin working on this front cockpit area, and then at the very end of page eight, you're actually making the stand. So it kind of gets off to a slow start with so many little pieces moves up as uh, speeds up as you get halfway through the build and then you know you're jumping ahead pretty quickly which is not that unusual a lot of the models once you start getting towards the end you're working with bigger pieces and they take up more real estate on the page so there's less steps per page but 
that's just just trying to stress how much amazing detail is in this and even with the engines even though they take up a lot of room this little kind of brass looking piece on the inside that's four five six seven that's like seven or eight parts just for that little piece inside of there maybe even nine pieces There's numerous pieces just to make that little thing and then it wraps inside two more pieces that has one two three four five six pieces on top and then you have an end piece and a front piece which is the end pieces three pieces and the front pieces like three or four pieces it's just a lot of different parts coming together to make this model but I really really love the detail that's in this and I have no complaints at all that I spent six hours putting this together because it was well worth it the detail was well worth it there was a few areas that made me go you want me to do what and i didn't think i could pull them off but i managed to and i am so very satisfied with it one of the areas that really sharply comes to mind is this gun on the back the gun it's very tiny it's a very tiny little gun and the guns that stick out the barrels of them the sides of them actually fold down very thin little pieces and I'm I'm like how, how am I even going to do that and it took me several attempts to get it one side was easier because I could hold the whole thing with flat nose pliers except for the little bitty edge that bends down and I basically just kind of crammed it down with the end of tweezers but then doing that to the other side I couldn't use those flat nose pliers or I would crush the other side back out and I struggled with it until I got it kind of halfway there and said you know I'm not going to fight with this anymore this is a nearly impossible part I put the rest of the top back together looked at it again was like no I can do better than that grabbed it with the long nose tip of the long nose pliers and was able to press that down and actually got the sides of the tips of the barrels folded down when I where I did not think I could actually achieve that kind of hinted around at it there are a lot of kind of long thin little pieces that have sides that fold down and there were times where the smallest tool I had, the precision tweezers, I couldn't fit all the way across and bend the signs down evenly. And I just had to do the best I can and kind of bend both ends as far as the tweezers would go in and just work along the edges. And it was, it took more time, it was more time consuming and a little more of a delicate operation, but I managed to pull it off on several different, very tiny, very delicate little bitty parts. But that's something you run into a lot. It's just trying to fold these little bitty parts over. Again, a lot of them aren't that hard to fold because the fold lines are pretty well scored and a lot of that resistance is gone. And that made it easier to work with little edge and bit pieces and make it work. The one thing that wasn't, that I found a little bit disappointing was this piece that goes on the end. And this takes us back to the bottom of page three and to part 44. When I first looked at part 44, I was a little bit confused as to how some of the parts fold up on it. Now part 44 is kind of an odd shaped part, and where you start, according to the assembly flow chart, is there's three kind of strips of metal in the middle section. And ultimately what you're supposed to do is fold them around into a box shape. So kind of fold it, fold it, and then fold it again into kind of a box shape around onto itself. And I've held the instructions up to the magnifying glass two or three times to try and be sure that I was understanding how to do that. Because the way the arrows kind of overlap each other, it almost looked like it was you're supposed to fold a piece out and then up. And then my fingers are going to fold this way, but out again. So it's kind of a stair step. And I started to do that. And I took another close look at it. And, and then I looked at the 360 view and I was like, no, no, I think these are actually supposed to be folded inward into a box shape like that and so I, I went and folded them back out now it was advantageous that I had spare parts because one of those parts broke off those three strap strips that you have to fold are not cut to the point where they're easy to fold and even though folding it one way and back the other broke them off if they were cut more to easy to fold they would break easier even though they weren't they were stiff and kind of hard to fold it still broke kind of easy, so that kind of stinks. The other thing that threw me for loop is what it has the E for engraved side pointed at. It looks like you're supposed to face up. When you lay the part on a table, the engraving is not supposed to be facing up. It's supposed to be just the silver side, and you're folding it around that way. 
but the reality is if you do it that way you're going to hide all the detail and it's not going to look like what it looks like in a 360 view you want to fold those box shaped pieces so that the detail is on the outside and not hidden on the inside and consequently or also i'm not sure if i'm using that phrase correctly also uh, the next step is those big flat pieces on the side have to fold up in such a way that they kind of enclose but you still want to be able to see that detail because that part attaches to the rear and you want to be able to see the detailing on that sort of rear piece once it's attached and not hidden and if i had continued how i thought the instructions were telling me most of that detail if not all of it would have been hidden from sight and it wouldn't have looked right several different ways there's at least two different ways that can be interpreted and i don't believe i'm the only one that had some issues with that this is where the 360 view comes in really handy because it's possible one interpretation is that the way it sat on the sheet was in line with a lot of other things being engraved side up but it was kind of placed backwards another possible interpretation is you can't quite tell exactly where that little end of that bubble is pointing and it might be pointing to the tips where there is engraving and if you faced that the right way it would have folded the right way anyway the important thing is look at the 360 view and make sure that think about it the way you're folding it if the detail is going to show then you're doing just fine if it's going to be hidden inside maybe you should do it the other way so that could possibly use some more clarification again thank goodness the 360 view is there and available so we can look and see and know which way to fold it i ended up breaking one part and the part that I did get correctly the stiffness of those little flat pieces that fold into a square or box shape didn't come out quite right and I didn't want to mess with it any more than I had to and end up breaking the spare part as well now moving forward to the top of page five you're building these little sort of brassish colored engine pieces that go inside here when you've got most of that assembly built and you're beginning ready to curve around or fold around part 61 and add it to the rest of the assembly the way it, it's, the way it shows the tabs is they kind of go inside and we're talking about a cone shape sitting on top of another part that's pointing straight out so it's not impossible and it ended up working a lot easier than I expected when I first saw that I was like you know you're basically trying to put a tab in a slot that's at a very similar angle that's going to be challenging but what I did is on the once I curved part 61 around I took the two slots they kind of stick out a little bit and i gave them a little bit of a bend inward so that they were kind of angled and then the rest of the assembly the two tabs the very tips of them i gave them a little bit of a curl inwards so that when i brought the parts together that curl popped inside of the tabs and they pushed together really easily and i was able to fish a tool in there and continue to bend over the tabs and bend them all the way around to secure the part it's very intimidating at first, but bending the slots in a little bit so that they're angled and bending the tab, tip of the tabs work beautifully. One complaint about that assembly that I have is the, there's four little straight pieces that go around the, the circle, go around the outer edge of it. And there are pieces that you fold in half and one half has one tab, the other half has another tab, which means the tabs are slightly offset. So when you place that part in there, the piece is going to have a tendency to sit at an angle you can try and straighten it up didn't straighten as much as i'd like that's a little bit disappointing it's a bit noticeable not out there in your face because it's buried in there but I wish it kind of the tabs were maybe offset to accommodate for that so that they would line up straight and look a little better unless of course that engine piece is supposed to be tilted which it may be and i'm not sure but this has been an issue that's popped up in numerous Metal Earth models where the part folds over so the tabs are slightly offset, the holes are not, or the slots are not, and the part tends to tilt. Uh, the skeletons of dinosaur skeleton backbone pieces are one thing that comes to mind. One big difference that I noticed between Zori's Y-Wing and the old school Y-Wing from the original trilogy is Zori's Y-Wing doesn't have the legs, eggs front end. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the original Y-Wings had a very kind of egg-shaped tip on the side of the engines. And from what I understand, according to an Adam Savage video I saw ways back, those are actually legs eggs. When they built the models, 
If you don't know what legs eggs are, back in the day, back in the 70s, 80s, maybe 90s, uh, legs pantyhose made pantyhose that came in what looked like a tube with an egg stuck on top. And they took those egg-shaped pieces and stuck them on the front of the Y-wings and painted them over. And that's what it was on the front. I've always found that very amusing. These do not have that egg-shaped tip on them. They are flatter. They're still, like, underneath here, it's kind of egg-shaped. And this is a little bit dome-shaped, but it's nowhere near the same as the original Y. It's nice. It's different. They can sell more toys that way, I suppose. I, I don't want to say it's disappointing. It's different. I like the new look. It looks nice, but it's not the same. Part of me kind of wants them to go back and make the original Y-Wing. But anyway, the part that goes inside, I, I have a dome shaping, like combo dome tool that I 3D print and sell on Etsy, if you don't know about it. Uh, I don't pull it out very often because there's not a lot of need for dome shapes or not a lot of use of dome shapes in these models, surprisingly. They come up, but not as often as cone shapes. But in the rare instance that I need them, they work great. I found I had just the right size to make the little tiny piece that goes inside. That would be piece 70. But when it comes time to do the outer part, because the middle of it is pretty much flat and the outer is curved, uh, I didn't use the dome shaping tool because I was I didn't think it would be quite right. For those outer pieces, I just basically bend a little bit, slid the tweezers out, bend a little bit, slid the tweezers out, finish the bend, and that gives it that curved shape. And that worked really well as far as I'm concerned. I think some people have tried to make it more of a dome shape, but I don't think that's what it's supposed to look like. Though I haven't done a ton of research, I could be wrong. It looked like the 360 view was kind of flat with kind of a curve along the edge, and that's more or less what that looked like. Maybe I didn't dome it enough. Maybe I should have domed it more, but I've really enjoyed it. It's been a great model. I cannot say enough about how excited I am to finally have this how excited I am about the detail. I really love this shape. I don't know why, but I really love this shape. Maybe it's because it kind of reminds me of Star Trek a little bit, because I'm also a big Star Trek fan. These long nacelle type things sticking out on struts. It's just a very, very nice and satisfying design in my eyes. And I love that Metal Earth has gotten to a point where they've been able to put a nut, so much detail in a model the instructions overall were very good. There were a the couple of hiccups I've talked about. Overall, the instructions are very good. The assembly was very good. The detail is amazing. The model is very solid. It comes together really well. It's lots of the coloring and, and de the coloring on it is is really great. There's just so many great things to say about I really, really, really have enjoyed this model. And I really, really want to thank Metal Earth for sending me this model for me to review, to build, and review. I'm also very thankful that I've got as much experience as I have that I've kind of grown with the complexity of the Metal Earth models. This has just been such a great experience all the way around. Recently did the Iconics. Star Destroyer, and it was a very complex and very detailed model, and I really love that. This has followed it up wonderfully with another wonderfully detailed, nice little model. The stand, by the way, the stand is very much the same stand as the Iconics. It's smaller, but it's the same style, same design, and it just has the two side pieces that fold out, and this just sits on top. Is it a very secure stand? No, not really. Um, the part piece can fall off fairly easily and that disappoints me a little but I do like that it's removable and that I can you know show this off without a stand getting in the way I, I do like that part it's a nice direction that they've stepped into with the stands I do kind of wish they had like maybe a little curved up piece on the back or something to keep it from sliding out if it were to slide but if they make on the other hand, if they make all their newer models with a similar stand and the stand breaks, there could maybe be a way where you can just buy a set of stands for your models and just maybe in the future they have a stand pack where it's two to five stands that you could fold and maybe they're customized and replace broken stands. And I don't know there's possibilities there. It's something that popped in my head. I don't know that that's where they're going, but it's just a thought. There are a couple issues with the model where seams aren't matching up as nicely as I would like them to be. It's not a huge deal. Fortunately, I'm not OCD, and it's not going to drive me nuts. 
Uh, if you look at it from a distance, it looks great. If you look at it close up, you can see some of those gaps don't quite line up. As, some of those gaps don't quite line up and meet as well as maybe one would like. I might be able to work it a little bit more to get them more lined up. I do worry that I'll scratch the model if I fight with it too much more. But again, overall, it's just such an amazing looking model. I'm absolutely in love with this Y-Wing and kind of want to build another. Kind of don't want to go through that again. <laughs> I say that jokingly. I've said that about models before where it was just such a difficult build that I don't want to do it again. But I don't, don't know that this is one of them. It's more of the I just want to keep move, moving forward than that I don't want to redo this. I think I would redo this one. It was a lot of fun. It was very challenging, but very, very rewarding. And before I forget again, because there really is a lot of little things to talk about with this model, there is a hole back here behind the gun where it looks like a droid is supposed to go. But there is no droid in this model. Nowhere does it, is it I didn't miss a step. Uh, there's no comment about it. There's just that space. And I'm led to think, I, well, I'm not led to think, but I'm kind of thinking that maybe there's an explanation to why there's no droid back there. It is Zori's Y-Wing, by the way. And perhaps in the movie we'll come to a better understanding as to why there's no droid there. Because there's always a droid there. I suppose it is entirely possible to fly one of these ships without a droid. I suppose we will learn more when the movie comes out. But for right now, there is no droid. I understand at least one person has tried to make up for that hole by making their own droid. That's fine. It's your model. Do what you want to do. I didn't do that. I don't think I want to do that. That's just me. The droid is not that big a deal. Really love and having the Y Wing though. If I really wanted to, I guess I could maybe 3D print a droid and stick him in there. No, I'd need to change the nozzle on my 3D printer because that's pretty small. As I was working on the Y Wing review video, I noticed at the back of the Y Wing I had made a bit of a mistake. There's supposed to be two little round parts in the middle there, and I didn't see them. Upon closer inspection, I realized that that framework that I talked about that I had so much trouble bending the strips over was put on upside down. Not a big deal. I was able to take that back plate off, pull the piece that I put upside down off, flip it around and put it back together, thus correcting the problem. I think it took about three or four minutes to correct the issue and now it looks like it's supposed to look but for a moment I thought I had completely forgotten to put those two round pieces on. I think I should probably leave it at that. I've said quite a lot already. There's so much I can go on and on about that I really really am enjoying this model. I do want to thank Fascinations again for sending me this model for me to review. As so many times as I've asked for a Y-Wing I finally got it. Yay. I do want to thank my Patreon supporters, as always, for supporting this channel. If you enjoy these review videos, if you enjoy the build videos, check out my, the links down below at the very end of this video. There is a link to my Patreon where you can become a supporter for as low as a dollar a month. A dollar goes a long way. Every little bit helps. And I've been working on a series of behind-the-scenes videos on my Patreon, if that's something you're interested in. Thank you for watching, and as always... Keep on keeping on.